from WDTN. This is Operation Football. Hello and welcome to week three of Operation Football. Coming up on tonight's show, highlights from some of the biggest games in the area, including a Big Mac showdown between Coldwater and Versailles. Tippecanoe battled undefeated Northmont and Tecumseh looked to cool off our reigning Team of the Week, Bellbrook. Well, Jack, we begin the night, as always, with our Operation Football Premier Health Game of the Week. Alter and Centerville are just a few miles apart, but they rarely play each other in football. Tonight, for the first time in nearly a decade, the Knights and Elks squared off. Our Ethan Fitzgerald was on the sidelines and has the story. Well, tonight we've got two teams right in each other's backyards. We've got one freshman quarterback, we have one quarterback going to a D1 school. Let's see how it shakes out. A good drumline montage on a Friday night sure gets me pumped up. Let's not waste any time. Centerville freshman quarterback Chase Harrison airs this pass to the sideline to J.R. Melzer. Feet in bounds. First down, Elks. Next play with the Elks threatening. However, you can't run without first learning to walk. The fumble is picked up by Alter's Matthew Shim. We are scoreless with time ticking down in the first. That turnover would hurt just a little. Alter's Jake Ruffalo not too far from the end zone kicks in the field goal. Alter leads 3-0 with 6.59 on the board. Centerville looking to turn things around quickly. Harrison connects with John Schlade on the slant. He's going to stretch his legs a little bit. He's able to dodge a corner but ends up going down on the 13-yard line. Big play for the two freshmen. I'm going to warn Elk fans right now. I have my own thoughts on this play. Harrison looks to one corner of the end zone. Sees he's got no option, so he takes it himself, and the refs say he's got a touchdown. Take a look again. I've got no stake in this game. Elks take a 7-3 lead over Alter with less than five minutes left in the first. Let's turn things over to Alter, led by senior quarterback Connor Bazelak. He finds his favorite target, Jack DiMario, with a tough catch. First down, Knights. Bazalek can do that in the air, and he can do it on the ground. Check out this footwork by the 6'4 stud heading over to Missouri. A few plays later, Bazalek looks to pass, but Centerville's defense is all over him. Dylan Hiltonbrunner and Caleb Miller getting some there. Flash forward to another night's drive. These plays are my absolute favorite, but they also scare me a little bit. Bazalek leads this pass right into my camera. Derek Willits with the hands of gold. Alter looking to score before the half. And unfortunately, that didn't happen because Jonathan Bruder has the clutch pick in the end zone. He's going to take it back halfway, but the Elks end up taking a 7-3 lead into the half. Alter was down going into the half, but they rode it out and come out victorious. They're now 2-1 on the season. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Fitzy. Again, it's the Knights winning it over the Elks 10-7. Be sure to join us next Friday when we're in West Alexandria. Our premier health game of the week features National Trail at Twin Valley South. Well, Northmont has shot out of the gate this season, winning its first two ball games by a combined score of 80 to 34. Tonight, the Thunderbolts were home against Tippecanoe, a team coming off its first win of the season. Let's head on over to Clayton. We pick things up late in the first half. The Thunderbolts on the move. Quarterback Miles Jones, watch him scramble. Keep the play alive. Gets out of trouble and finds Jazz Keys. Jazz takes it all the way down to the eight-yard line before they drag him down. Very next play, it's Michael Franklin. Boy, what a big night he had. He'll finish the drive with this eight-yard touchdown. It's 28-7, to T-Bolts. Now, the Red Devils were doing all they could to try and stay in this game. Four seconds to go in the first half. Troy Taylor goes deep to Josh Burrow. Watch this. He's got five or six guys around him. Somehow makes the catch in traffic, but he's six yards shy of the goal line. The time expired. Third quarter, Miles Johnson goes to the air and hooks up with Justin Golson. And Golson's going to fight for every inch of this field. That's first down. Going to set up a Michael Franklin touchdown run. Franklin with a school record, 280 yards on the ground tonight. Northmont knocks off Tippecanoe, 35-14. Our running team of the week, the Melbrook Golden Eagles hosting the Tecumseh Arrows. Coach Jeff Jenkins' squad facing fourth and nine at the 32, and he says, no worries, we got this. And you know what? He's right. Senior quarterback Brendan Lebensky rolling right and airing it out and putting it right on the money to Cameron Britton, the senior hauling it in for the touchdown. The Golden Eagles miss the extra point, but have the 6-0 lead. On the ensuing possession, it's Bellbrook's defense coming up big. Junior defensive back Braden Gedeon making the interception. The turnover going to turn into a second, uh, second quarter score for the Golden Eagles. Off the play fake, Brendan Lebensky going to swing the pass to Alex Westbrock. 
The sophomore running back dives into the end zone for the seven-yard score. Our good friend Nick Falzerano, he's liking that play. Yeah, that was a good play. The Arrows finding a tough sledding against the Bellbrook defense. Watch senior defensive end Jordan Kiefer deliver the quarterback sack. And for the second straight week, Bellbrook produces a shutout. The Golden Eagles improving to 3-0 and with a 26-0 win over Tecumseh. All right, to Edmondson Stadium in Riverside. Stevens hosting Kenton Ridge on the opening kickoff. It's the Cougars' Carson Jones, and he'll weave through traffic, turn on the Jets, and he goes 95 yards for the touchdown, and bang, 7-0 Kenton Ridge just like that. Very next time the Cougars touch the football, it's Dylan Lehman on the quarterback keeper. He'll find plenty of room down the far sideline, and the junior will take it to the house, 13-0 K-Ridge. Stevens down 26 to nothing when Austin Womack heats up. The junior quarterback hits Daniel Bowman for a 38-yard pickup that would lead to a touchdown to make it a 26 to seven ball game. Moments later, it's Austin Womack going to the air again. This time a perfect pass to Terry Hudson. He'll take it in for the touchdown. Suddenly, Stevens down by just two touchdowns. However, just before the half, the Cougars strike again. That's Dylan Lehman to Calvin Debert for the score. Kenton Ridge over Stevens tonight, Hutch 47-14. All right, to Mack Cummins Stadium, where Oakwood played host to Carlisle. First quarter action, the Lumberjacks getting on the board with the aerial salt. On third down, Thomas Lunny hits Jack Armstrong, the All-American boy, a 42-yard touchdown. Oakwood takes a 7-0 lead. The home team threatening, in, again, in Indian territory here, but it's Ryan Neal making the interception there for Carlisle. Oakwood, though, they'd get the ball back, and, well, Lunny, he's going to strike again. Back to the air, Armstrong. Shakes one tackler, stiff arms another, and this is going to be a 38-yard touchdown, 14-0 after the first quarter. The Indians get on the board with a short run. Bryce Naylor crosses the plane to cut the lead in half, but the Lumberjacks not letting up. Lunny floats one down the sideline for Jake Sargent. The senior hauls it in at the 25 for the 25-yard touchdown, and the Jacks go on to win it. As we go to the scoreboard, it was Oakwood 35, Carlisle 14. Xenia winner over Franklin, 35-26. Pippa shuts out Meadowdale 42-0. Fairmont, a winner over Milford 28-21. And Beaver Creek, big over Fairborn 57-19. Congratulations to the Stevens Marching Indians, our Operation Football Band of the Week. Under the direction of Kenny Carpenter and assistance from Jessica Hendrickson, the Marching Indians are 105 members strong. This year's show is entitled The Ties That Bind and features original music by Ian Brom. Tonight, the band was joined by the Alumni Band and the 8th Grade Band. The Marching Indians will perform at the Bands of America Regional Championships at Miami University and the OMEA Buckeye Invitational at Ohio State. Stadium. Congratulations to the Stebbins Marching Indians, our Operation Football Band of the Week. We're the Belver Golden Eagles cheerleaders, and you're watching Operation Football. Let's go!
Welcome back to week three of Operation Football. The Midwest Athletic Conference is one of the best in the state, if not the country. You know, it seems like every MAC game is huge, and that's probably because it is. For sales <laughs> hosting Coldwater to HB Whole Field, and the Tigers gambling against the powerhouse Cavs early. Third and two, Tigers go play action. Ryan Martin finds Derek Cavan mm. wide open, and the big gain takes it into Cavs territory. Later in the drive, Versailles facing a fourth and one. The Tigers go for it, but the Cavs this time are ready. Ben Wenning stacks it up. Jake Poling, Tigers turn it over on downs. Coldwater wasting no time catching in. Jake Hemmelgarn hits Cole Freeling across the middle for the TD. 7-0 Coldwater. Then on the first play of the second quarter, Cavs on the move again when Mitchell Niekamp gets the edge down the right side. He cuts back for the score from 25 yard, 14 0 Coldwater. The Cavs kept rolling later. Hemelgarn on third and goal, keeps the play alive, finds Noah Miller, touchdown, Coldwater, 21 0. And the Cavaliers go on to beat the Tigers 35 7. All right, Hutch Troy Christian at Northridge tonight. The Polar Bears getting pumped up for this one, but Troy Christian gets on the board first. Check out this run by junior running back Jason Blake. 40 yards he goes. And just about untouched, seven nothing Troy Christian. Here's Northridge defense coming up big. Check out the quarterback sack for the Polar Bears, Jerron Lander. And that's a six yard loss and he's fired up. Next possession by Troy Christian and it's quarterback Caleb Twist keeping it himself for the touchdown. Troy Christian up 14 nothing. Now on this play, it's the Polar Bear D coming up big again, Jerron Lander again. In fact, with a nice stop, the Polar Bears will finally get on the board just before halftime with this nice pass from junior quarterback LaShawn Hooper to Mason Penley. It was 14-7 at the break. Let's go to the scoreboard and get you your final on that one. Troy Christian doubles up Northridge 28-14. Holman beat Wayne 47-28 to tonight. Miamisburg, they get a big win over Loveland. Marion Local rolls past Parkway 51-7, and it was Brookville 47 to nothing over Dixie. Congratulations to the Bellbrook Gold Eagles, our Operation Football Cheerleaders of the Week. Say hello to Emily Apgar, Callie Benedis, Daniel Brody, Chloe Caldwell, Catherine Gorsuch, Grace Havens, Sally Jers, Rachel Krakus, Ashton Neal, Nicole Smith, Megan Solomon, and Cassie Ziemer. Three cheers to the Bellbrook Gold Eagles, our Operation Football Cheerleaders of the Week. All right, Hutch, we are taking our last time out. But when we come back, highlights from the Sydney Yellow Jackets Belmont Bison game. Plus, you do not want to miss our big play of the night. Stick around. Operation Football continues right after this.
Welcome back to week three of Operation Football. Let's get right back to the highlights to Welcome Stadium where Sydney made the trek south to take on Belmont. Picking it up in the third quarter with Sydney up 31 to 6. Belmont senior running back Jason Wagner picks up 15 yards the hard way with a hard earned run right there, but the drive would stall. Belmont again on special teams having problems. The punt and the snap. The punter is sacked. Sydney continuing to pour it on with his 15 yard TD run by Caleb Harris. Sydney rolls on with a 38-6 victory over Belmont. All right, Hutz, we have shown you a lot of great highlights tonight, but only one can stand on its own as our Operation Football Big Play of the Night. And for that, we are taking you back to Edmondson Stadium in Riverside, where the very first play of the night, the opening mm. kickoff, Carson Jones of Kenton Ridge, wow. pulls it in at the five, weaves his way through traffic, and watch him go, Hutch, 95 yards for the touchdown. Ooh. What a way to start the game. The Cougars would go on to beat Stevens. Congratulations to Carson Jones and Kenton Ridge for turning in our big play of the night. One fast Cougar right there. Okay, other scores. Trotwood Madison falls to Pickerington Central, 42-19. Dayton Christian, a winner of opponents, 20-14. It was Clinton Massey, a winner over Fenwick, 21-18. Butler defeats Wilmington, 38-12. Troy, a winner over Turpin, 29-7. Minster defeats Fort Recovery, 28-22. Madison Sr. takes down Valley View 24 to 16. Shawnee, a winner over Thoroughgood Marshall, 30 to 17. Clinton Massey nips Fenwick 21 to 18. Fenwick's first loss. Tri-County North, a winner over Twin Valley South, 36 to 7. Carroll shuts out George Washington of Indiana, 42 to nothing. Bethel Big over Tri-Village, 63 to 19. And it was Lehman Catholic, 10 points better than Graham, 24. To 14. All right, we want to thank everyone who logged on today to WDTN.com and voted for our most anticipated game of the night. And the winner was Alter against Centerville with the Knights winning that game 10 to 7. Speaking of WDTN.com, log on anytime. You can see all the highlights from tonight's show, get all your scores, and if you missed anything from earlier this season, you'll find it there as well. WDTN.com. Operation Football. Week three is in the books. Big NFL weekend kicks off this weekend. You're going to be in Indianapolis covering the Bengals. Let's hope they get their first win ever at Lucas Oil Stadium. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching tonight. Have a great weekend.